The Life of Yuga Aoyama, The Shining Hero, My Hero Academia. Yuga Aoyama, also known as The Shining Hero, Can't Stop Twinkling, is a student in Class 1A at UA High School training to become a pro hero. Welcome to the Imagi. In today's video, we're going over the life of Yuga Aoyama. Before we begin, we publish a new video every day, so be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. The Imagi's reach stretches beyond just this channel, so if you're a fan of us, please consider subscribing to our other channels and following us on all of our social media accounts. Help us reach our goal of passing 100,000 followers on all of our accounts by the end of the year. And with that out of the way, let's get into the video. Background like many people with quirks, Yuga Aoyama manifested his navel laser during his early childhood. However, because of a birth defect, Yuga's beams involuntarily leaked out from his navel. Later, Yuga received a special belt created especially for him to prevent his powers from leaking out, an item he would wear throughout his childhood. Entrance Exam Arc Yuga is first seen among the students waiting for Yue's entrance exam to start. When the exam begins, Yuga comes across a one-point villain bot, defeating it with his navel laser. After thanking Izuku Midoriya for his team play, he tells him that they won't cross paths again and flees the area to collect more points. Yuga obtains enough points to be admitted to the hero course at UA. Quirk Apprehension Test Arc Yuga uses his navel laser to run the 50 meters in 5.51 seconds and for the standing long jump, Yuga ranked 14th in the test. Battle Trial Arc Yuga watches the battle trial between the teams of Izuku Midoriya and Ochako Uraraka against Tenya Ida and Katsuki Bakugo. He's impressed with Izuku's efforts against Katsuki during the fight. Yuga is teamed up with Mina Ashido and gets some acid on his cape. USJ Arc When the League of Villains invade the USJ, he's warped away by Kurogiri to an unknown place. Yuga is missing the whole time during the villain's attack, and nobody knows what he's doing nor where he is. It's a mystery that remains secret, but no one seems to care. UA Sports Festival Arc on the occasion of the UA Sports Festival, Yuga trains for the event. During the first test, as soon as the obstacle race starts, Yuga avoids Shoto's ice that freezes the vast majority of runners. Yuga manages to finish the race, finishing in position 42, just the last of those admitted to participate in the next trial, and seems to have retained a fair amount of damage for using his quirk. He's later among the many asking to be on Katsuki Bakugo's team, though Yuga, instead of asking, assumes that Katsuki would select him. But Yuga is forced to join Hitoshi Shinso's team, along with Mashirao Oji, and Nirengeki Shoda, when Hitoshi uses his brainwash on him. His team places third thanks to Hitoshi stealing the points from Tetsu Tetsu's team, allowing him to participate in the final event, which is a tournament. When Mashirao decides to resign, Yuga puts his hand on his shoulder and, despite knowing he was being manipulated by Hitoshi, says that he won't give up. Yuga's opponent in the first round of the tournament is Mina Ashido. During the match, she causes his belt to malfunction, causing him to panic. She then attacks him with a one-hit KO to his jaw, knocking him out and eliminating him from the tournament. Yuga, along with his class, watched the closing ceremony of UA Sports Festival. Versus Hero Killer Arc Two days after the sports festival, Yuga's in class. During the hero informatics period, Class 1A has to decide on hero names. Yuga writes down and presents his, Shining Hero, I Can't Stop Twinkling which shocked his classmates using a sentence as his hero name. Midnight criticizes the name, thinking it's too long. Midnight suggests he shorten it to Can't Stop Twinkling. After Class 1A has finished formulating their hero names, Yuga is given a list of 40 workplaces in order to choose a workplace that he would like to train at. On the day of the workplace training, Yuga is at the train station with his class so that he can go to the workplace of his choice by train. Final Exams Arc On the day of the exercise test, Principal Nezu reveals that Class 1A will be fighting against UA's teachers in their exercise test. Yuga is paired with Ochako Uraraka and they must face 13 in their exercise test. The test begins. Ochako and Yuga reach the escape gate, but before they can go through it, 13 creates a black hole, causing the duo to hold onto a guardrail to prevent themselves from being sucked in. Ochako tries to think of a plan, causing Yuga to surmise that Ochako is thinking about what Izuku would do. Yuga then asks Ochako if she likes Izuku, which shocks Ochako and makes her blush, causing her to let go of the guardrail out of embarrassment. As a result, Ochako gets drawn towards 13, much to their shared surprise. Facing 13 directly, Ochako instinctively uses her combat skills learned from Gunhead and manages to handcuff 13, allowing her and Yuga to pass the practical test. Back in class at UA, Yuga learns that he passed the written test and will go with his classmates to the Forest Lodge, which is a boot camp. Yuga, along with his class, go to Kiyashi Ward Shopping Mall to buy necessities for the Forest Lodge. My Hero Academia Two Heroes At some point, Yuga arrives on Eye Island. Yuga hangs out with the rest of his class after the Eye Island Expo opens up. 
Forest Training Camp arc. Due to a shopping center incident where Izuku had an encounter with Tomura, Shota informs Class 1A that the destination for their lodge trip has been changed and the new destination will only be announced on the day of the event. The first semester has come to a close and summer break has begun. Following the end of the semester, Yuga is invited by Deku to participate in an endurance training session along with the rest of Class 1A's boys. When Katsuki arrives and challenges Izuku, the boys opt to compete against each other by sprinting down the pool. When it's Yuga's turn, he tries to reach the other end of the pool using his navel laser without touching the water at all. However, in the middle of the flight, he begins to feel an intense pain in his stomach, causing him to deviate and collide with Hanta, who is also trying to reach the other side using his quirk without getting in the pool. Both students fall into the swimming pool. Shoto wins the race. After this, all Class 1A prepares to watch the final race between Izuku, Katsuki, and Shoto, but before they can start, Shota arrives and cuts their quirks off due to their time limit for the pool expiring, kicking all of the students out of the pool area. On the day of the summer camp, they're informed that the new destination will be a mountainous region owned by the professional hero team, the Wild Wild Pussycats, where they will undergo reinforcement training to strengthen and upgrade their quirks, which will also allow Class 1A to obtain their temporary licenses. Class 1A's bus stops for a restroom break, where they meet Pixie Bob and Mandalay, who challenge the students to reach base camp past the forest in three hours. Then, all of Class 1A is forcibly thrown into the beast's forest by Pixie Bob's quirk. The journey through the forest to the cabin takes them around eight hours before finally arriving at the facility, battered and tired. Class 1A fetch their luggage from the bus and put it in their dorms, and later go to the dining hall and the pussycats serve dinner. The next morning, Class 1A's outside the training camp cabin. Shota greets his students and tells them that they will undergo reinforcement training to strengthen and upgrade their quirks. Yuga trains to get his body used to navel laser so that he can keep using it even if his stomach hurts to increase the range of his laser. On the night of the third day of training, Yuga is paired up with Momo for a test of courage presented by the Pussycats. Minoru tries to trade partners with Yuga, but he refuses. Class 1A students traverse the forest while Class 1B students try and scare them in the dark. Their fun event is interrupted by the arrival of the League of Villains Vanguard Action Squad. The forest is filled with poison gas that leaves most students unconscious. Momo creates gas masks and rushes through the forest, handing them out to all the students. She joins up with Yosetsu so he can guide her to the students in Class 1B. Momo asks Yuga to watch over the unconscious Kyoka and Toru and take them back to the facility. Near the Vanguard Action Squad's rendezvous point, Yuga hides behind a bush along with Kyoka and Toru. Yuga contemplates on what to do because he follows Momo's instructions, but Dobby and Twice's presence are preventing him from doing that. Dobby seems to spot the bush Yuga's hiding behind, much to Yuga's fear. He prepares to go and check, however, he stops after Twice informs him that they must also call back Nomu since he only responds to Dobby. Yuga is relieved that Dobby didn't discover him. Izuku, Mezo, and Shoto land along with Mr. Compress at the Vanguard Action Squad's rendezvous point. They engage in battle against Himiko and Twice until Kurogiri arrives to retrieve the Vanguard Action Squad. Mr. Compress reveals that he hid the real marbles containing Fumikage and Katsuki in his mouth. Mr. Compress slowly enters Kurogiri's warp gate. Suddenly, Yuga fires his navel laser at Mr. Compress's face, breaking his mask and causing Mr. Compress to spit out Katsuki and Fumikage. Thanks to Yuga's actions, Mezo manages to rescue Fumikage, but Dabi grabs Katsuki's marble before Shoto can reach it. Dobby, Mr. Compress, and the captured Kotsky teleport away from the training camp. Hideout Radark After the capture of Kotsky, the training camp ends and Yuga returns home. Two days afterwards, Yuga visits Izuku in the hospital. After Eiichiro and Shoto state their intentions to save Kotsky themselves, Yuga is also against the idea after attempting to rescue Kotsky along with the majority of the class. Yuga suggests that they leave Katsuki's rescue to the pro heroes since they've been prevented from partaking in combat, to which Fumikage agrees with Yuga. Yuga watches and fears the All Might vs. All for One fight on TV, along with his relative. Provisional Hero License Exam Arc Following Katsuki's rescue and the retirement of All Might, Nezu transformed UA into a boarding school in order to protect the students. The Heights Alliance was built in just three days. Shota Aizawa meets with his students outside of the building. He states that they must start preparing to get provisional hero licenses like they had planned during the training camp. Class 1A arranged the luggage in their respective bedrooms. Later that night, the boys of Class 1A are in the common space on the first floor. The girls of Class 1A show up and Mina Ashido suggests a room showcasing competition. When they check out Yuga's room, it has an entire set of mirrors of different sizes as well as a large portrait of himself, a disco ball, and armor. 
The following day, Shota tells Class 1A that their next goal is to obtain the provisional hero licenses. Shota announces that they'll be working on developing their own special moves, much to the class's excitement. The class visits Jim Gamma, where Cementos creates a training ground for the class with Ectoplasm using his quirk to create villains for the class to practice their moves on. Yuga trains his quirk until the day of the provisional hero license exam. Outside of the National Dagobah Arena, Class 1A meets with students from Shiketsu High School and Ketsubutsu Academy High School. Before the exam starts, Yoku Mitomera from the Hero Public Safety Commission explains that the first part of the exam involves thinning out the amount of people who can succeed by playing a game, where people put three targets on their body and are given six balls to throw at the other examinees' marks. Those whose targets have been hit are disqualified. Participants need to eliminate two students to move on to the next phase of the exam. As the exam starts, the students of the other schools focus entirely on UA. However, Class 1A is able to defend themselves and avoid being hit by the balls. Yoshindo tells his fellow classmates that he'll shatter their solid defense and uses his vibrate quirk on the ground, unleashing a powerful earthquake that completely shatters the ground and causing members of Class 1A to disperse. Due to this attack, Yuga gets scattered and has to defend himself from the attacks of the rest of the participants. The situation becomes complicated for Yuga since two of his targets were hit and only had one before being eliminated. So he decides to hide among the rocks. Tenya, who's looking for his classmates, finds Yuga and decides to work with him so that they can find their classmates and pass. However, Yuga was content with the rest of Class A passing ahead of him. Tenya refuses to leave Yuga behind as he's the president of Class 1A, and as such, it's his duty to support everyone, including him. However, they find themselves in the heat of battle against dozens of examinees from different schools ready to take them out. As Yuga thinks that the situation is bad, Tenya tells Yuga that as long as he's able to, he'll do his best to serve his class. Seeing that he's holding Tenya back, Yuga fires his naval laser upwards. Tenya wonders what Yuga's planning. Yuga tells Tenya that he's already lost two targets and doesn't want Tenya to go down with him, and thus decided to use himself as a decoy to attract more examinees, which will allow Tenya to outspeed and attach his balls to two of them while they're distracted. Yuga admits that his dream is to be equal with everyone else. Enemy students arrive, but just before they attack Tenya, all the remaining 1A students make their way towards them and manage to defeat the other students. On the ground, Yuga is confused as to what's going on. Mina Ashido tells Yuga that it's thanks to his naval laser that they managed to group up with him and Tenya. The remaining Class 1A students work together and they begin passing one after the other. Tenya criticizes Yuga that he's the only one that doesn't see himself on the same level as the others, as he's the beacon that allowed Class 1A to succeed. Yuga and Tenya eliminate their last targets to fill the final two spots for the first phase. With that, Yokumiro announces the end of the first phase. Yuga waits in the rest area with his classmates until the start of the second phase of the exam is announced. On this occasion, the students are expected to rescue HUC employees who will act as victims of a large-scale terrorist attack. To help in the rescue operations, Yuga uses his naval laser to create light so other students can see into dark passageways. At the end of the exam, Yuga is one of the students who passes the exam, receiving his provisional license. Shie Hasaikai Arc the next day, Class 1A attends the UA opening ceremony. After this, at class, Shota talks about hero work studies, hero activities done off campus. Three days later, Shota introduces to Class 1A the best students of UA who will teach them about hero work studies. Mirio Togata, Tamaki Amijiki, and Nejire Hado, better known as the Big Three. Despite their reputation, they're actually all a bunch of easygoing eccentrics. Class 1A gets confused when Mirio Togata challenges them all to a fight. At Jim Gamma, Mirio tells Class 1A to attack him whenever and wherever they want. Yuga, like his classmates, attack him, but his naval laser slip right through Mirio's body without harming him. Mirio counterattacks, and in a few minutes, he defeats the entirety of Class 1A, thanks to his quirk permeation. While Class 1A recovers from their defeat, Mirio explains how his quirk works and advises Class 1A to participate in the hero work studies, as it'll help them improve their career to be heroes, just as it helped him become one of the best students in UA. Remedial Course Arc Weeks later, after the police raid at the base of Shie Hasaikai, Izuku, Eijiro, Ochako, and Tsuyu return to their dormitories at the school, where Yuga, along with the entirety of Class 1A, check to make sure his classmates are doing okay after their mission. After a class with ectoplasm, Izuku and Tenya prepare to go eat lunch, but Yuga approaches Izuku and puts a block of cheese in his mouth, and Izuku acts confused and frantic to the situation. Yuga then refuses Tenya's offer to eat lunch with them. Izuku then states how Yuga's behavior left a strong impact on him, and how Yuga was a man he could never read. Later, Izuku is seen late at night going to sleep as Yuga stares him down as he sleeps through his window. 
A while later, Yuga leaves, but also used some cheese to say he knows Izuku's secret, which he left behind for Izuku as the latter, who was aware of this, gets up and sees the message. The next day, Yuga does his training as he calls out to Izuku and shows him a new move he created, Naval Buffet Laser. He also demonstrates a greater mastery of his quirk by reducing the size of his laser and writing a French phrase on the stone with it, though it causes him severe stomach problems. Seeing his state, Izuku asks the instructor for permission to take Yugo away from training to recuperate, but before that, he asks him what he meant in his message. Yuga explained that he's aware of Izuku not being accustomed to his quirk and reveals that he went through a similar experience. Yuga goes on detailing his childhood of having to wear a belt to prevent his powers from leaking out and how he noticed it was similar to Izuku's initial lack of control of his before they both overcame it. He then tells Izuku he's not alone in hardships, as it's better to face them together or they won't excel. His words cause Izuku to smile and thank him for his support before Yuga suffers from another stomach problem. After a few days, he and Izuku become good friends, with some of the class noting Yuga's more livelier attitude and his association with Izuku. UA School Festival Arc Days later, in the classroom, Shota Aizawa announces that UA High School will be having a school festival and tells Class 1A to pick out a program to perform at the festival. The 1A students are all brainstorming ideas for the upcoming culture festival, but they don't reach an agreement. Later, at Heights Alliance, the entirety of Class 1A decides that their school festival program will be a live performance and dance with party space. The next day, they choose the members that will be part of the music band. At the end, they decide that Kyoka will be the singer. Later, the students decide who will be part of the dance team and the staging team. Yuga ends up being part of both since Mina's plan for Yuga is to use him as some kind of human disco ball. He'll dance, but he'll also be responsible for providing lighting effects with which to ambiance the music performance and encourage the public. Class 1A begins to practice for the festival, and after a few days of training, Mina tells Izuku that he's being switched over to the staging team from the dancing team to help maneuver Yuga during his part of the presentation, although he will still be able to perform. He's selected since he and Yuga have been getting along as of late. Class 1A continues to practice until the day of the festival. The night before the event, Yuga and Izuku find out that the rope that they'll be using to suspend Yuga in midair for his part in the routine is now frayed. Not wishing to disturb Momo, who had gone to sleep, and because Horikoshi probably wanted to expand the plot. Come on, come on, you should have just used Momo. Momo could do all of this. Izuku says he'll go buy a new rope from a store early next morning. Izuku arrives with the new rope, and the music performance of Class 1A ends up being a huge success. Pro Hero Arc as November comes to a close, the Wild Wild Pussycats pay a visit to Class 1A to celebrate Ragdoll's reinstatement. Not long after training and going to bed to sleep, Yuga wakes up after hearing a loud noise coming from Deku's room. He walks over to Izuku's room, which has the door left open, and finds the room a mess. The bed covers ripped to shreds and Deku clutching his glowing hand, which is coursing with the power of one for all. Despite this, Yuga thinks that the reason Izuku's thrashing was that he didn't stockpile enough cheese and wanted more. To keep him from discovering the truth, Izuku decides to let Yuga think he got it right. Endeavor Agency Arc Class 1A participates in a hero interview training taught by Mount Lady. On the night of Christmas Eve, the whole class celebrates Christmas. Then the class holds a surprise gift exchange. Yuga's gift, which is a photo of himself, ends up in Minoru's hands, much to his dismay. Due to the increase of villain activity, the Hero Public Safety Commission demand all the student heroes for all academies to undergo practical field training. With hero work studies back in effect, Yuga, Mina Ashiro, and Toru Hagakure work under the number 9 pro hero, Yoroi Musha. Paranormal Liberation War Arc Winter break ends and students return from their work studies to show their progress with their quirks and skills. At Ground Alpha, under the supervision of All Might, the students battle villain bots to show off the new skills and super moves they've developed. Mina, Yuga, and Toru are the first to show their improvement under the tutelage of Yoroi Musha. Yuga Aoyama shows off a brand new super move, Naval Saber, using it to destroy several of Yue's villain bots, much to the delight of his classmates. Toru Hagakure jumps into the battle, congratulating Yuga and revealing her new ability to grab and warp light, grabbing one of Yuga's laser beams and bending it into a group of bots, destroying them. Although Yuga ends up with a sore stomach for having abused his quirk during the exhibitions, the three students proudly announce their success, much to the delight of All Might and the rest of the class. Later at night, he helps his classmates to organize a work-study brainstorm hot pot party to energize everyone for the new term. The months go by until it's late March. 
The Hero Public Safety Commission had uncovered the plans of Tomura Shigaraki and his organization, the Paranormal Liberation Front. They organized a large force of heroes to take the villain organization down. While a team of heroes raid the Jaku General Hospital, where the Nomu are created, another team does the same at Gunga Mountain Villa, the front's main headquarters. Yuka joins the Villa backup team along with some of his classmates and Class 1B students. Their mission is to provide support to the heroes who raid the Gunga Mountain Villa and prevent villains from escaping. After Tomura Shigaraki woke up and commanded Giganto Makia to reunite with him, bringing the PLF lieutenants with him, heroes try and fail to stop the walking calamity. Earphone Jack detects the giant and warns her teammates. Likewise, Midnight contacts the students and transmitting to them what they have to do to stop the giant. Momo takes the leadership to defeat Gigantomachia and uses her quirk to create a large number of vials of undiluted sedative, giving one to each student so that at least one can make the giant swallow a vial. Following Momo's lead, the students set the trap for Gigantomachia by softening the ground. As they planned, Gigantomachia falls into their trap and the students begin their assault. Yuga is part of a group tasked with attacking the PLF lieutenants so they don't interfere while the others try to make Gigantomachia swallow vial. With the help of Mezzo, Yuga fires multiple naval lasers at the villains. However, the lieutenants and Gigantomachia manage to repel the assault. Despite this, the students continue the assault, which now has the support of several heroes who had come to help. Not without great difficulty, Eijiro Kirishima gets Gigantomachia to swallow a vial of sedative. More heroes led by Majestic arrive to take charge of Gigantomachia now that he's ingested the sedative, because the more he moves, the faster it'll spread. Gigantomachia, however, takes on an armored appearance and easily defeats the heroes and continues on his way to Tomura. Before being defeated, Majestic uses his quirk to bring the UA students to safety, who can only watch helplessly as the giant devastates everything in his path. Did you enjoy our video? Be sure to check out these other great videos from the Amagi, like all of these My Hero videos that I just did. And make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos. I'm Adrian, thanks for watching. I'm out.